Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my garden. <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot of gardening going on out here these days, but I do have some indoor gardening to do that I think you'll be interested in. So for today's video, I'm going to talk about planting and growing leeks. If you saw this photo recently, You have to know that people went nuts over it on social media. And if you want to grow massive leeks that are so productive, you are going to want to watch this video. Now let's go inside where it's a whole lot warmer. Ah, oh, it's much warmer inside. I have been growing leeks for years and I'm crazy about them. They're easy to grow and when you think about the fact that you get to eat almost the whole stock of the plants, you really get your money's worth in a smaller area of growing space. Leeks are members of the onion family. They have a milder flavor than onions and you can use them in all kinds of dishes. Over the years, I have grown all sorts of different leek varieties. But two years ago, I came across one that is now my all-time favorite, and that is Bulgarian Giant. The seeds came from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, and I'm going to show you today how to get them started. And I also want to share with you a couple of different ways I'm going to grow them this year. And I'm thinking it's going to be much easier and I'll have better success. So here we are on January 3rd and I'm starting the seeds today. I know that sounds really early, but the seedlings really take quite a while to get going. Ordinarily, I would start them in February, but I've been watching some British gardening shows and different videos over the years, and I've noticed how they start theirs quite early, and I thought maybe that would give me even larger, healthier seedlings to plant out into the garden. I do transplant them in the garden in late April. And so you can tell it's quite a long time of getting them started, but it's totally worth it. So here's what the seed packet looks like. You can see that is a whopper leek. And the interesting thing about leek seeds is that they are at their most viable for the first two years. And since my seeds are a little bit older than that, I'm going to plant a few extras just in case a few seeds don't germinate. To start plants from seed, you're going to need a few supplies. The first thing is containers that have drainage holes in the bottom. This is really important because you don't want the soilless mix that you're starting your seeds in to be sopping wet. No plants will put up with being wet all the time. I'm using some pony packs. I've got a ton of them that I've been recycling over the years. And this one has six cells in it. They do come in different configurations. And so I'm going to plant six of these so I end up with hopefully 36 leek seedlings. Another thing you need is some type of a container that does not have drainage holes because these are going to go inside and you don't want water going everywhere every time that you water them. Something that is super important is to start with a soilless potting mix. So this would be something called germination mix, seed starting mix. You could use a potting mix if you can't find the other type. Just go with something that doesn't have fertilizers and other things added into it. The reason this is important is because if you use garden soil to start your seedlings, very often there will be certain types of fungus in the soil that will cause what's called damping off disease or damping off syndrome. And what happens is it kills off a whole flat of seedlings very quickly and you don't want that. So always start with a sterile mix. Now, while we're talking about damping off disease, the other thing I use is something called finely milled sphagnum moss. You can find it at garden centers and online. This is No Damp Off, that's the brand. And I'll show you how I use it, but this contains natural chemicals that inhibit the development of that type of fungus that causes damping off disease. So this is totally worth it. And the great thing is you use very little at a time and it's very inexpensive. Okay, let's start planting some seeds. 
The first thing I did is I put a bunch of germination mix into a bucket and added some water until I could tell it was lightly moist. Because I'm just working with small pony packs, I'm holding them over the bucket and filling them that way in an effort to be less messy than I usually am, although I'm not being very successful. So it's a matter of filling it and then pushing down into each cell because you can see it's not full once you compress the soil a bit. So I kind of fill it, push it, and top it off a little bit and then it's ready to go. Leek seeds need to be planted at one quarter inch deep. And I'm going to use a tool that some friends of mine developed. It's called the Little Dibby. It's like a dibber tool, only it's specifically for planting seeds. And it has little marks on it to tell me where the depth is. So this first mark is for one eighth inch, and here is a quarter inch at the second one. And that's the depth I'm looking for. So I'm just going to push it down into the soil and pre-make all my holes to make it quick and easy to plant the seeds. If you're curious about this little tool, they have an Etsy shop and I'll put the link on this video or at least in the information below the video on my YouTube channel. This other end of the tool, just in case you're curious, is actually for thinning seedlings and lifting them as needed. So it's a little scoop here. But it's really an ingenious little tool and I thought I'd give it a try. This is what the leek seeds look like and I thought I'd show them to you now because you're never going to see black seeds on brown soil. <laughs> Next I want to cover all the seeds which is a very quick and easy process. I also want to lightly water them in. And I know people are going to say, where did you get that little watering setup? This is actually called a bottle top waterer. You can find them very easily by searching for those exact words on the internet and then they just screw on to any kind of a soda pop bottle and they are ingenious. Okay, so I'm happy with that moisture. Now it's time for me to sprinkle on a very light layer of that finely milled sphagnum moss that I was telling you about. You can see how little you use, but it really works great. So this bag is going to last me forever. <laughs> okay, that's done. The next thing I want to do is to put the flat underneath a grow light. And I know folks are going to ask me what this one is too. This is a stack and grow light setup from Gardener's Supply. I got the bottom unit a few years ago and I liked it so much I thought I'm going to get one of their add-ons so I can have two shelves. Well I liked that so much I ended up buying a third which I don't need to use right now. But, but this is really nice. It uses T5 LED lights and it's lightweight, very portable, very easy to use. So the next step is to put either a clear plastic dome or a clear plastic bag over your seedling flat. That's going to increase the humidity, which in turn will help the seeds germinate. Once the majority of the seeds have germinated, go ahead and take off your dome lid or your clear plastic bag because it's served its purpose. And then you want to keep an eye on the soil moisture. You want it to be evenly moist, again, not sopping wet. Now let me tell you about the two changes I want to make this year in how I grow the leeks. In past years, while the seedlings are growing indoors, I've routinely trimmed them back to about two inches in height every time they grow a few inches. The idea behind this was to force the plants to develop a nice root system rather than focusing on growing their leaves. But this year I'm going to skip this step to see if they'll grow nice sturdy leaves and be larger at transplanting time. 
I'm really looking forward to this other change. In the past, when I'm ready to transplant them outdoors, I dig a trench and carefully plant the seedlings in the bottom of it. Every so often, I would fill in some soil around the base of the seedlings as they grew. That keeps the lower part of the leek stem white. But not this year. I have been watching how British gardeners plant their leek seedlings and it is so much simpler. I'm not going to dig a trench. Instead, at transplanting time, I'm going to use a dibber tool that will push the soil down to create a six inch deep cylindrical hole. It will be one hole per seedling. I'm not going to fill in the hole with soil because that would kill the seedling. Instead, I'm just going to let the hole slowly fill back in over time. In theory, this sounds so much easier and I'm very excited to see how it goes. And I'll certainly give you updates from time to time. I hope you'll consider growing leeks this year because they are easy, they are so cool, and you get so much in such a small amount of garden space. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'll see you next week. And just in case you're curious, this is what's going on outdoors.